Hey everybody, it is Tanya Thrifty Treasures. Welcome to the Reseller Six Pack episode number 30. Can you believe it? 30. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so that is amazing. Yeah. Tonight we are going to be talking about our goals and plans for 2018. But first, let's uh, meet everybody and find out what they're drinking. Steve and Steph. Uh, can you see mine? Ooh, look at that artwork. Yeah, what does that say? It is, it's Stone Ruination. Ruination. Yeah. Cool. And I'm still drinking that same six pack that I've been drinking the whole time of these white star <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> so it's pink grapefruit. That's a true story. That looks refreshing, Steph. Oh. Lauren? I'm Lauren, and I am drinking ginger beer mixed with Crown Royal, and it's delicious. Mm, whoa. <laughs> huh. Jory? Uh, I'm Jory, good use good, and I'm drinking just some MGD, Miller Genuine Draft. And Lonnie? Hey, guys, I'm Lonnie, also known as Garage Flips on YouTube. Uh, I'm drinking Andy Gator. Uh, mm -hmm. from what's that brewery? Uh, Abita. Abita. Yes. Abita. Thank you. That's kind of my go-to beer. I haven't drank beer in a while, but I've put the carb, low carb diet aside and I'm actually eating like regular stuff now. So I'm going back with beer. No wonder you've been in such a good mood lately. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first beer I've had in months though, actually. Wow. All right, Dwayne. Well, one of my goals for 2018 was to uh, go on the wagon. So I am drinking Virgin Moscow Mules. I have some, my, I got this for Christmas. It's Moscow Mule Mix. Huh. And you're supposed to mix it with vodka and club soda, but I'm just uh, foregoing the vodka. So, Is it good that way? It's actually not bad. I was kind of, but it's good. <laughs> I'll have to try that sometime. I am just taking it easy tonight and drinking some dragon fruit uh, vitamin water. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I got to run the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so you know how these go. They run themselves. That's true. They do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Especially after about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, right? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And okay. You're just trying to keep it, keep it in the ocean. The boat is on its own, and you're just trying to make sure it doesn't go, like, way far away. Exactly. Are you still smoking weed, Dwayne? Or are you gonna <laughs> uh, Hey, I can't give up all the vices, right? I mean <laughs> come on. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so let's get into our topic tonight. Um, first question, what are your plans for 2018? Would you be doing anything different? And if so, what might that be? And um I don't want to pressure anybody to go first or not. So if you guys want to volunteer, whoever wants to go first, they can. We'll I'll go, go first. first. Oh, oh, go ahead, Lauren. I'll let Steve go first. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Go, Lauren. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't know. You look pretty excited. No. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> All right. Well, one of my big goals is I am going to try to source more higher price point items instead of smaller price point items. I just know that this year I'm going to have less time to put into my business and I want to make sure that I'm still getting a really good ROI off of everything. So I'm just going to be sourcing a lot smarter. Yeah. Okay. So Lauren, you're going to source thousand dollar items versus a hundred dollar <laughs> items. <laughs> if I can. Yeah, already pretty hot. Okay. Well, you can kind of see what I got going on behind me here. Hold on. Like, this is all stuff I'm about to list, and it's more stuff I picked up this weekend, but it's higher price point stuff. I need to get away from, like, the $20 things because it just eats my time, and time is money. So yes. slowly I'll be phasing that stuff out. Very good. And, uh, I, I think I talked about this once before. Um, I tried that same exact thing, and what I ended up doing was losing money because my bread and butter was gone. And I was only shooting for the higher stuff. So make sure you kind of ease into it and make sure that your profit, you know, curve doesn't change too drastically. Cause like I said, I tried to do the exact same thing and I realized that 
harder time finding those higher priced items. So I was actually ended up losing money in the in the long run. Good advice. Thank you. <laughs> so Lauren, what is your specific strategy for doing that? Like, um, I just figured this year coming into it, like starting January one, I'm going to be really, really selective about everything that I'm sourcing. Um, I just did a big haul yesterday. I spent six hundred dollars, but mm. I plan to turn that around into like six grand. So to me, that's worth. Well, yeah. It. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's not all gonna flip super super fast, but it. I'll probably have a lot of it throughout the year, but it's slow selling stuff that I will make my money back on. That's better than putting that money in a bank, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, I was gonna. I was thinking of doing a haul earlier today, but I was too busy listing, so I didn't. You, you mean like a video? video? Yeah, a video for your channel. I was thinking about it. I even posted on Instagram. I was like, what did I do? do? Yes. And then I looked and it was almost six o'clock and I was like, oh, I don't have time to do it anymore. <laughs> do it tomorrow. We want to see it. Yes, Screw definitely. I'd love to see I it. I can try. I can definitely try. If I get home in time, I will. Okay, everybody subscribe <laughs> to Hot Chic Thrift. And uh, you can watch my whole stuff tomorrow. that I picked up yesterday. Fine. Was it retail arbitrage or was it um, good good used goods? <laughs> <laughs> Everything yesterday was from consignment stores and thrift stores. Mm. Okay. So, you spent six hundred dollars at consignment stores and thrift stores. Yep. Holy cow. That's not going to be a long video. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't do everything. I'd probably pull like the 20 coolest things that I picked wow. up. Because otherwise I'd be talking for six hours. So <laughs> definitely film it. We want to see that for sure. Yeah. Yes. All right. Fine. Okay, babe. Oh, is it our turn? Do I'm glad you went first, Lauren, because that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, actually, it is. Might think alike. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and now we're thinking twice about it because of what Dwayne said. So, now here it, we are. It's very similar to what you're doing. We're going to. Um, we've been talking about building our eBay store up again, but but not. We're not trying to build it up where it's you know like full time thing, but we definitely want to start putting more product on there. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to source specific for eBay. But we're going to do, we're going to have, right now we're saying it's going to be like, if we don't make $30 on it, we're not going to, you know, do it. Like $30 profit is what we would shoot for. And that If can, it's long tail, if it's a short tail item, we could do 20 or something. Yeah, it'll adjust. I mean, we're just going to, we're going to fill it out and see what happens. Because if we find, I mean, we could have a hundred of something that sells for $5 and we get it real cheap, we'll buy a hundred of that item. You know, if it's, yeah. we'll buy lots. But that's, I think that's. We're just going to kind of the, the change we're going to make is just bring eBay more into the fold, but we're still we're still going to see where this um, local selling, you know, try to exploit that as much as possible and, and maybe experiment with some different products, mainly for for our channel, like the YouTube channel is to try some different things on the local selling on a small scale so that, you know, people can see if that stuff works. And I'm talking like. I know tools work and I know clothing works because we see people do it. But, you know, just like some. Uh, Not just pots and pans. We're going to try to yeah. sell some other stuff too. I mean, we're still going to do pots and pans. Dwayne mentioned bread and butter. And mm -hmm. that stuff, I mean, it, it's just our bread and butter. And it, it makes, it just makes it easier to do these other things. So we're also going to source outside of via trading uh, for pallets and stuff and um, larger <laughs> like type the, items. Yeah. For the first time ever or. No, we've done no. other ones. We do government liquidation all the time, all the time for that. And in our um, early in our early days, we we didn't have any, you know, like a source that we've just totally relied on. And then when we stumbled into when we bought via trading, when the first time we were going there buying single pallets, we were buying the Woot when Woot was first came out on the internet. You know, they had all those deals. We were buying Woot customer returns, and we'd buy a pallet at a time, and. While we were there, if you've seen our videos of Via Trading, it's freaking massive. And that's when we started looking at other things. And then we experimented with, you know, the customer returns and it just, it took off. So we and stuck to it. Yeah. One thing we, we can say this on here now, because um, I think, 
but you know how we buy Macy's returns? Yeah, we're not supposed we're, to say it anywhere. Else, no, but the M word. We're, we're not gonna, supposed to. No, but if we're buying directly from Macy's, we haven't. We're going we're to try it this to. year. So <laughs> cool. It's just a matter of time before we're behind bars, guys. <laughs> so anyway, we, yeah, don't, we don't have any agreement with anybody. We haven't done it yet. If you, we don't want to get into the, the agreement thing. Let's let everybody else tell what they're okay. going to do this year. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I bought clearance stuff like on Macy's, like on their website, especially their jewelry. I'm always um, looking at that and trying to see what kind of deals I can get, and then I'll turn around and sell it on eBay or Amazon. So I love yeah. Macy. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people do. Right. Maybe the house of jewelry returns. I know. I know. I really should look into that this year. I don't know. That's something to oh, think about. Need, need Tanya is a whole pallet and more jewelry. <laughs> that's right. I don't have enough stuff already. <laughs> right? I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Well, Jory, you want to go uh, next? Yeah, sure. My plans are, well, still to start making more YouTube videos because I'm slacking on that. But my big one for reselling is uh, I want to start moving more product i'm not so interested in like setting my dollar point higher i've been trying to more just kind of clear it out sorta like i've been selling to a lot of resellers the last couple months and just big box lots being sent off to auctions and it's worked pretty good because just doing the storage units and i want to start getting into pallets too like you guys are doing there Steve yeah i stuff. think i think steven steph has got everybody excited about that yeah. well <laughs> i got the room and the space to be doing it so there's is really oh, we're jealous. why it shouldn't be so that's my big one if we had, for that. yeah if we had more room it would get it would be ugly man <laughs> see the room <laughs> here is not bad it's the sourcing pallets here is more difficult there's not as many of them so the competition's a lot harder on them and the price points are pretty low on some of them now right. so if you cross the border and filled up a truck and brought it back over do you have to pay an import tax on it i've been looking into that and yeah a little bit there's Varying degrees. I don't know. There's enough numbers and nonsense and like lying CO6 filter that just makes my fucking head spin. But uh, it's something I've looked into. I was talking to a couple uh, UPS reps too because they can do that over the border stuff for a fee. And it was around 150 to 200 bucks to figure out what the fees would be. So that might be an avenue too because at least I know they're going to fill out the paperwork properly and get it over the border to me. Hey, on the, uh, I've never checked this, Jory, but on the, like the gov liquidation we a lot of people have an interest in that we did a video where we went and picked some stuff up but they have there's a canada one and it's yeah. not always on there have you saw that before I, I have seen that uh it's mostly uh bicycles from police okay. that recover stolen bikes that's the that's the biggest one on there <laughs> and then like huge equipment like road graders snow plows ambulances yeah. fire trucks the real big stuff the odd time like i did see a school auction came up and they got rid of like 300 uh i think like g3 imax and a bunch of old pcs i was mad i actually missed that one i could have made some money on yeah. that yeah you just got to keep it keep checking keep that thing man yeah. Yeah, see that government liquidation that um, there's Hill Air Force Base is on there, but um, <clears throat> like so there, or, you know, I can buy 32,000 pounds of brass, you know, uh, bullet casings or, you know, 75,000 pounds of airplane aluminum. <laughs> so it's a lot of scrap, but you also have to uh, say, you know, you have to, they have to have a, uh, a letter of of destructions so saying that you know they have to witness that you destroyed this stuff and not just you know took all the airplane parts and built you know chinese airplanes or whatever <laughs> yeah. those are big time when you see the the massive quantities of items like that those are those are big time contracts you know some of those contracts you're you're agreeing to buy for you know a year and you got to handle just massive tonnage monthly but you're going to make a lot of money on it. But that's that's a, you know, that's big companies are doing that. Big, uh, I don't know if it's scrap companies or whatever. But well, the the casings yeah. is funny because I see a lot of guys now recycle more of their round casings more than mm -hmm. ever before. On the gun range, they're picking every single one up now because the cost of good ammunition is so much more now than the cheap Chinese stuff, and they're just repacking and the casings they're yeah. picking up. Right, right. Hmm. Like we never. Used and the to other that. thing that. There's a ton of is these huge military generators. 
mm-hmm. you know, something that you're not going to need for your house or, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I've thousand kw <laughs> what am i gonna do with this yeah you know? i could probably keep the power on in the town I, I, yeah exactly <laughs> that's what i'm saying they're huge <laughs> so could you imagine I, I keep watching could you imagine jory getting one of those like you could seriously your house man it would be yeah incredible. there's only like 300 houses here i could probably <laughs> generate enough power for 300 oh. houses here enough to at least keep the heat on <laughs> yeah see and then jory jory listen we were thinking here. Then you can charge them for power that's you know just a little bit less than the, the hydro that you yeah. already pay for. See? Oh, and the hydro here is model right there. And the hydro here is a joke. Oh, it's I'm not going to get into politics, but yeah, it's. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. Here. Liberal government <laughs> has just destroyed Ontario hydro. I, if I showed you our hydro rates, you'd be disgusted by it. Like it's, we have over 200 225 dollar hydro bill every month. Wow. Wow. We pay. We have that in the summer, but not in the winter, because you know in the summer our uh, air conditioner is going. But uh, oh, there's, there's, well, we get a delivery charge fee because electricity dissipates from the line, so they charge us a delivery fee. Oh my goodness! Weird. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, pretty sweet. Nuts. And we make more hydro than we actually use, and we sell it to you guys at a discounted rate that costs us money. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so I guess you guys are welcome for the free hydro. <laughs> if anyone's yeah. watching in the Buffalo area, <laughs> that that right there is good business sense. Right there. <laughs> that is. Um. So, Dwayne, what are your plans yeah. for 2018? Do you plan to do anything differently, or? Um, I do. That? Um. Uh, make sure that I I'm doubling up my listing that I'm doing from last year, which I've already started, which ends up being about 20 a week. <coughs> I'm a part-time reseller. Um, you know, I have a full-time job. So 20 a week is, uh, you know, three a day kind of ish. So, um, and then uh, I'm going to test out the, uh, the local market and, and see what I can do with that. Um, uh, I've done a, I did a little bit of it back in the day when it was Craigslist. Uh, I haven't, I've done a very little bit with offer up and stuff like that, but, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on doing the local game a bit. Being a full-time, like you've got a full-time job. So do you, do you do your listings? Like I know Lauren, she does them at 1 AM. <laughs> when do you, like, how do you do that? Do you have a schedule or you just say, Hey, I'm going to squeeze it in today or, um, I usually can get one or two in a day, but or through on the weekends, you know, I'll sit down and uh, either turn on some music or turn on, you know, watch these, these weird people sell pots and pans out of their front yard for like, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll turn that on. <laughs> um, and then I'll just, I'll just power through and list, list them. So. Yeah, right, I have a lot of I'm, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I just, I have a lot of respect for people that have, you know, they work a full-time job, a regular job, and they're able to have enough energy you know, when they get home to do yeah, it. Have the discipline and the motivation to build, uh, whether it's a side business or a future full-time business, you know, whatever the purpose it's serving, I have tremendous respect for that. That's, yeah. That, and that's, have a family, get laundry done, clean, cook. Definitely. Ready. Yeah. That's it's pretty hard for me to go to work and list. Just shut up now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say a second ago that now I can get, and I guess we've been able to do this for a while. I just didn't really use it. But I've been watching videos on the big TV so I can still have my MacBook and be listing and be getting caught up on everybody's videos on the big TV so I can listen. Right. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm, nice. Yeah. I did a little listing spree and I really enjoyed uh, being able to do that. And even if I'm just listening to you, you know, I'm, I'm still getting caught up in what's going on. So yeah, Tanya, you, you kind of freaked me out the other day. You sent me a picture of <laughs> you watching. You sent me a picture of one of my videos on your big TV. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little unnerving. Well, I was going to post it. I was going to make a post, but I thought, no, that might embarrass them. So oh, I'm unembarrassable. I promise you that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> They'll dig deep. I'm telling you. They'll dig deep. <laughs> Stuff like that. Especially with, Steve. with Steve here in the room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So you said, what about me? Um, yeah. Okay. So I think the killers have kind of had an impact on a lot of people. Um, yeah. 
So one of my thing, one of the things I want to do this year is I want to start buying pallets and I'm not saying I'm necessarily, necessarily going to buy, like they buy the via liquidation pallets uh, via trading liquidation type pallets. Uh, I'm looking more at like, I looked at the gov liquidation. I almost bought a pallet or two the other day or I had plans to, but I think the logistics, both the price and the logistics scared me off. Because it was going to weigh like what I wanted to buy was going to weigh like 2,500 pounds. I was going to have to rent a truck. It's 150 miles away. I was going to have to get storage. The price of the pallets went higher than I thought it would. And I got kind of spooked. And I'm like, all right, let me back away. You know, But I do want to buy pallets, buy liquidation merchandise. There's another, there's an auction I'm going to go to this weekend just to start sourcing other places other than just like yard sales and thrift stores and stuff like that. So yeah, for I think it's a big responsibility uh, because for you to get that much inventory at one time, it's overwhelming. I know it would be for me. Well, and that's one of the things, even when you buy storage units, um, because you know, you sign up, you're going to, you say that you'll clear this out up for it. And you, you know, 90% of the time, you really don't even know what you're buying. I mean, you're buying well, off a few things that you saw. I mean, you, I mean, you've seen, but uh, it's not, not manifested. Well, no, I started that's looking, like Dwayne. 10%, what you see, usually that's 10% of that unit. It's, there's so much yeah. junk buried in them. Not more well, than you expect. In this particular Go case, ahead, I started looking, I started looking at the lots I was going to buy and I started, it was like, two pallets stacked on top of each other for each lot. And then I started trying to figure out like, you know, this is like real big shit, right? Like <laughs> this is not stuff that you can bring your minivan and take the seats out and load it in there. Right. This is stuff like where you're starting to figure out like, okay, can my vehicle actually carry this? Will the trailer carry it? Do I have to rent a U-Haul? How many miles is it? It's all these logistical things that you get into when you're moving big stuff around. And then I got like a quote from a shipping company and they wanted like gazillions of bucks, you know, to transport it. So yeah, not going to give up. It's just like when you go up to that next step of buying pallets, there's more to consider than just the money, you know, but there's Absolutely. a whole lot of different factors. So, but that's my goal. I want to get into it. But a lot of your mindset for it is what I really, really admire. And we can't stress enough is you did research. You thought about it all. You did all that planning before you decided to pull the trigger and you put a minimum or a maximum amount you wanted to go and right. then you stop. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what you got to do. You can't and, get married to something and just go for it because you become obsessed. You know, it's just too many risks. So I, I, I talked really to, I, I talked to the killers right there uh, before, before it happened and they were like all pro. Yeah. You need to do this, this and that, this and that. But then right before the auction started, Steve told me, Steve sent me a message. He said, hey, check it out. Look at it. Don't fall in love. And I think that is like the best advice. It is so easy to fall in love with these deals, you know? And um, Especially when you put a lot of time into researching it. You're like, I've right. got to get it now, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yep. you I'm, don't. I'm actually excited about you getting something, Lonnie, like a, a pallet, because I think you do a really good job of, when you present information, whether it's, you know, garage sale stuff, whatever it is, you do it in a way that I think a lot of people are going to have a better understanding. Cause I know when I talk, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what the hell I just said. And then when I hear you say something, I'm like, Hey, my head, my head is thinking that but I could never say it like that. Because that's because me and you were on the same wavelength, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> that's scary. That's scary for both of us. No, but I, slightly out of phase. Slightly out of phase. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm glad that this is you know, a lot of people have been asking about, you know, they ask a lot of questions about these, you know, buying liquidation or buying pallets. And it's, I think oh it's good gosh. we're talking about that. And and there is a lot of opportunity there, but I hope that our video Wade, oh my gosh, I'm so on. sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. That's a lot of money, oh Wade. Goodness. I've never seen it. Was that a <laughs> holy cow? Thank you. Mi Missed the decimal point for the 10. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> right? Did you miss the decimal there? 
Good job, man. Thank you, Wade. You're awesome. And yeah, that's very generous. Do we all have to take our clothes off or something? What's that one? I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a YouTube rule? We're new at this. That's crazy. Right? Yeah, you go first, Steve. All right. I need to start a little dance. A hundred dollar super chat. Yeah. Oh my god. It goodness. says crush that. And it yeah, was, um, was Wade's like... Ventures. That's awesome. Holy cow. Because we're so on cool. Tanya's channel. She's just so sweet. Everybody loves Tanya. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So cute. That's fantastic. <laughs> That blew my mind. <laughs> it derailed the train, though. So now we're all like, whoa. <laughs> that blew my underwear off. <laughs> yeah. Carol says we all need to have a drink for that. I yeah, have a drink to yeah, yeah. Go grab a beer. Wade, Wade Spencer. Thank you, Wade. So, like I was saying before, I was so unrudely interrupted. Does Wade Spencer have a channel or? Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Everybody go everybody go subscribe to Wade. Wade Fincher is here on YouTube. Oh yeah, he does. Awesome. awesome. I subscribed. Sweet. Hi, Jerry. Okay, I'm doing it. Oh, I don't want to miss this. Yeah, and if you guys okay. just hover over his name right there, I'm all that way too. Actually, is it? I think you have to go to the right, the three dots now. Yeah. So click on it and then it says go to channel or something like that. Yep. It used to be you just hover over his name, but they don't do it that way anymore. Cool. Let's see. What were we talking about? Lonnie was talking Lonnie about, was talking about big things. Yeah, his big things. I thought Steve was talking. Are you done, Steve? Well, well we were talking about Lonnie. <laughs> Oh, I was saying, like, um, so we're talking about buying pallets and all that. And that's a good, I'm glad we're touching on that because it's important to know, like, and I, you know, I think we showed in our videos, if you don't get all, if you haven't watched them all, there's, there's work involved, you know, and we buy, we, when we first did it, we, we were naive, but it still worked out, you know, but we work hard. So there is going to be work involved. There's there's risk, but there's ways to mitigate the risk. And um, the main was is get your stuff as cheap as you can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it this is we're just glossing over yeah. it right now. But seriously, there's it's a great opportunity for you to supplement. And it sounds like that's what we're talking about. You know, tonight is things we're going to be doing, and that's going to be in addition to if you're doing eBay. So it's really a great opportunity to supplement what you're doing right now and take small bites. It might not be for you, but if it is, then the, the opportunities are, are there. Okay. Ta da! <laughs> All right. <laughs> we should, whenever we're done talking, we should go, ta da! <laughs> okay, so will anybody be, no. um, what? Go ahead, Winnie. Did. Did everybody go? You did. Yeah, everybody did. Yeah, Lonnie did. Okay, did I was thinking it? Lauren didn't go yet, but she did. She was did first. Did you Tanya. finish, Lonnie? Mm -hmm. Tanya didn't yeah. go. That, yeah. Okay. Oh, Tanya did not go. So what I was going to say is <clears throat> the same things I pretty much say every year, but really, I mean it this time. Um, I definitely want to get more organized, and I want to build my Etsy store up more because I feel like there's definitely money to be made over there. My friend Angie, Treasured Vintage, she's pretty much all just Etsy and she does so well over there. Um, and I don't even think she's on eBay and you guys have seen the profits that she makes on Etsy. So, um, but you know, and I really list everything that's vintage on eBay and Etsy too. So I double listed, um, let's see. So I'm gonna do, and I think Dwayne had also mentioned this too. Some days I don't ever list anything. But for 2018, I mean, one item minimum. Even if I'm deathly ill, I got to get at least one item listed. So, and I think that's going to be a good way for me to um, build my inventory. I mean, there'll be days when I list a lot more than that. But you know what I'm saying? Just to kind of, if there is some kind of a trick with the algorithm of eBay. Um, didn't you mention something about that, Dwayne? Yeah. The yeah. Algorithm trick. Basically, it was, uh, you know, just uh, consistency. 
whether it's uh you know your you know whether you do a weekly goal or a daily goal but uh you know i've heard many people say just working on your ebay a little bit every day doing something um mm -hmm. definitely helps the uh whatever the algorithm whatever you want to call it right can i put I everybody on the spot <sighs> sure no mm -mm. everybody except for Dwayne. <laughs> did Dwayne say no but way too much <laughs> <laughs> okay here here i'll put you on a spot this way so yeah. it's january 7th okay we're already into the new year and have what what have you done to go you're like are you moving forward on your your whatever your goals were or plans however you want you know your resolutions what have you done i know i know lonnie you sold on the first day of january on a local sale on facebook right yeah i did but that, i mean that wasn't that just happened because i've adjusted goals though steve like because i think i think when you talk about goals i think you can get caught up on results oriented goals and i've tried to instead focus on behavioral oriented goals instead since the results aren't always controllable the results aren't always um the results aren't always a direct uh, a direct function of the inputs so all you can control really is the inputs right yeah if you're doing you can't the inputs, necessarily control the outputs right all the time because there, there's some stuff like sales and things like that you can't really control sales <laughs> Right. You can you can hope you can set your goal to help get to that result. You can't get that result by doing something directly. Right. Yeah, you can do you can take actions that I mean, you can you can affect that from past history. You know, there's certain steps that that will do it and it's not always going to be the same. Right. But you can have an impact if you're say if you're listing, you know, consistently or you list. I mean, when we did eBay all the time, we knew that if we were listing a lot, we would sell. That doesn't mean that every week it's the same amount of selling, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's that impact. But if our goal was to increase sales and then by January 7th, we haven't done any listing, then we're not, <laughs> what good was having the goal? And the reason I'm asking this is because January 7th, and I know a lot of people and myself included, will set goals and get all fired up and then the hardest thing is for if especially if it's a goal where you're not already rolling if you're not already uh, you know that moving object it's hard to get that thing moving right what is that a, an object that in motion stays in motion yeah an, an so, object at rest tends to stay at rest yes <laughs> so I mean, I'm, I'm just curious how many people would like. Has anybody start, done all their goals yet? Have you started not them yet? Not done them all, just. But started your, what started your goals have something. been. Like, yeah. have you been proactive in trying to. I have. Them? I mean, I, um, I've done, I think I put in 19 things this week. So I'm one Good. short. Good job. Uh, working that one, I haven't, I haven't really looked into the local stuff so much because it's the stuff that i would put on there is in my garage and it's too damn cold to do stuff mm -hmm. in my garage right now so that's for a later date but yeah i've definitely started doing the uh the listing i've been doing excellent excellent i know lauren you've you've already started it you're doing yeah. the way you made your purchases this last yeah. fall yeah. right and I actually, I haven't even touched the stuff that I bought yesterday. Today, I was listing all stuff that I actually am trying to move out, the lower priced stuff. <laughs> You're liquidating. So, to me, it's like dirty dishes now. I'm like, get it out of here. I mean, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Jory? I, I to tell you the truth, I, I suck at goals. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Uh, I wanted to do part of the closet done. I mean, I got some of that done in the house. But I, it's. I don't know. I'm. I just fly by the seat of my pants. I'm too ADD. I try to write down things I want to get done. So when I get bored or have free time, I'll go to the book. And yes, I write it down. Because if I go on my phone and start writing down a goal, 
and then I get a text message or a notification or an eBay sale or name. <laughs> then I'm, you know, I'm into eBay and then from there I'm looking something up and then from there I'm talking to people on Facebook and then it's four hours later and I got half a goal <laughs> kind of recorded in the phone and I forget about it. So <laughs> like, yeah, that's about it. A big goals, I guess, would be the house. I've still been working on that. That's every day. As far as reselling goes, though, I haven't done much for the new year to, to change it. Looked up some pallets. But yeah, yeah I just... That's, that's that's why I love reselling, though. I'm so ADD. I can just do a bunch of stuff. If I want to get into old computer parts, I'm selling old computer parts. If I want to do clothes, then I'm at the Goodwill buying clothes. When I get sick of that, I'm at the auction buying antiques again. So okay. I can keep it changing up for me because I, I can't do things that get stagnant and stale very long. Or I'll just, if I get bored of it, I just stop doing it. So I, I, can, can I tell you all what I've done? And I, this is what I found for, like, I want to list more this year, like Tanya's talking about. But I think we all have different uh, motivations or different ways to motivate ourselves. I decided that instead of saying I'm going to list X amount of things per day, mm -hmm. because not all days are created equally. Some days yeah. my wife is off of work. Some days the kids are here. I can't do as much stuff. Some days I'm outsourcing. Some days I'm not. You know, it's not a static kind of situation. So I think the best way I can motivate myself is to force myself before I go to bed every night. And I've done this since January 1st is to open up the spreadsheet and put in how many items I listed that day and what the total dollar amount of those items were every night before I go to bed. And then I hit save and then I close it. That's the last thing I do. And then the next day that's kind of, I kind of, I'm kind of thinking about that. Like, Dude, you listed three items for sixty dollars yesterday. That was lame. What are you going to put in there tonight? You know, and it's not like there's never a fail unless I don't fill out the spreadsheet. Yeah, but it keeps it on the top of my mind. And during the day, I'm thinking about what am I going to put in my spreadsheet today? That's you know, I'm like judging that. myself every day. You know, yeah, no, idea. just like what you said in here in the chat. She, she said self accountability. That's mm -hmm. freaking awesome. That, um, you know, like Weight Watchers, they say that that's why Weight Watchers works is because of that accountability. It's, I mean, obviously, the losing weight thing is all the same, but be, having being accountable yourself or have somebody else help you be accountable, it's huge. You know, the, the thing with having somebody else help you, it works for a little while, but but let's say you miss a, you miss a day or you miss a goal, then all of a sudden, like, Y'all don't talk about it anymore. And then the next week it's like off the table. And it's like, you know, so really it's you. It's it's really yeah. within you, I think. You know, we're, we're within me. It might be different for you guys. I don't know. I think that's I think that's brilliant what you're doing. It sounds sort of like I don't know if it was Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Jefferson had a he would he would write down like if he he thinks he's a jerk, which he was rude, he would say he was working on not being rude. And then at the end of the day, he would score how he did that day. And he would work on that one thing for like a month. But every day he did like you're doing, Lonnie. He would actually have to put in there, if it was one to five, he would have to be like, right, right. or whatever it was. And then that was like, that would help to motivate you. to Just like you were saying, you look and go, man, I, screwed, I only did $60 today. I'm going to. Well, just like any diet. Um, so you don't lose your momentum. You have to schedule in some cheat days and some days to go mm -hmm. off on people, like Benjamin Franklin or whatever. <laughs> He's got his day to blow up on somebody to be a jerk. Uh, yeah, or Benjamin Franklin day to just played around do anything. He yeah. played around plenty. I know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I meant you have to have some days to where you're not completely um, just kicking yourself all the time, you know, always failing or whatever. You got to have some days where it's like, you know what? I'm not doing anything today. <laughs> Today's my day to watch TV and do nothing. You know, yeah, though, so I, I found that um, if it's all totally left up to me, I can I can justify my way out of it. I mean, I can talk <laughs> myself out of being lazy. If, you know, if I, uh, well, you know, I only listed two things, but yeah, I did pump up the tire, and I did. You know, I can I can talk myself out of actually <laughs> what I'm trying to do, and it, you know, it's just one of my things. So, to me, a little bit of help from another person which me and uh, Monica Miller have, have decided to do the 20, 20 items a week thing. So uh, it's kind of a check in when you can thing, but uh, you need, most of it is myself, but there's always that little bit that's like, Oh shit, I could. 
I'll find an excuse. <laughs> and it, it's only to myself, but I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of having like so many listings per week as opposed to per day, because some days you feel like listing, some days you don't. You know, some days you're right. more productive. Or, you, or like anything. you said, you get so busy yeah. that you can't one day. Happens. And then, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, so you, let's, let's address the I'll elephant in the room. <laughs> uh, I'll so, the hundred dollars super chat. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I was asking Steve about your twer twerking goal for 2018. Oh my goodness! Oh. Do you have any twerking goals, honey? I know. Honestly, what about the work? I mean, that was pretty badass. So, what are you gonna do that? That was the 2019 special. You guys realize what it took to get like I, I, I worked on the the worm. It wasn't something that I just waited to do. I worked on it every day. He's practicing it. It was a freaking workout every day. He's a perfectionist. He wants to have stuff in, in order, you know, in, in line and ready. I wouldn't say perfectionist if fail. you saw the results. But um, <laughs> it was good. As far as the, I haven't given that much thought. Um, I would probably do it if it was a charitable thing, because it does hurt. I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> what about the twerking? <laughs> Only for very special celebratory occasions. I, I'll twerk on a spontaneous thing because I think it's good to, I think that it's good for you to physically celebrate something when you're happy or when you're happy for somebody else. I think we're too restrained a lot of the time, even with it's with strangers or whatever. <laughs> What's so funny about that? No, it's, no. It's just like, yeah, I, 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 I get still, that. I'm it totally makes sense. That you think that. People, so wait, Lonnie, Lonnie, did you see his video? What's yeah, that? He, did you see his video from Which one? His, his yard sale? His yard sale. Oh. I, he I actually, saw, dude, it's like actually, five hours long. <laughs> I know. He, actually, he got a complete stranger to let him give a spider hug. A guy. A real a, no like leg a, on like the ground spider hug. 25 year old guy. Dwayne, why are you awesome. why are you like you're you're having to say it's a guy? What difference does it make? He's <laughs> it's a spider Jackie hug. Too. No, no, that's no, California. No, they don't care. Not not for you. No, not for you. I'm thinking the guy has to feel like what the hell's going on. I don't he think had he, to be like no, he, no, he <laughs> what? Was, if anybody if you saw it, don't watch the long video. We we do the YouTube one and you'll see the spider hug. And the guy enjoyed it. He had a big smile on his face, and so did I. That did not make it more normal. I mean, if I was getting a good deal at the garage sale. What's that? If I was getting a good deal at the garage sale. Yeah. Depends on the like, you know, I'll try to buy a ten bucks. He gave him a better deal. You know, I'll do half price, but you owe me a spider hug. I did. I did give him a discount. He bought go. more stuff. He bought more stuff after the spider hunt. He wanted another he, one. Yeah, he, he, wanted boy, he would stuff. be the world's worst greeter at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I wish everybody would try. Just try to like, just try it for you know one day, and and when you feel like if something good happens, it's easy when it's you. Even I mean, some people won't really celebrate even if it's for them. But if somebody you like. Or you love our family member or kid or whatever if they have something good happen celebrate like it's a real freaking celebration it's nice to go oh oh honey you did good be the loudest person in the uh, the uh, auditorium if your kid is up there doing something <laughs> embarrass the hell out of your kid that's fine but oh i can't wait for you know, like celebrate like crazy genuine about it because you'll feel that inside you'll feel that for if somebody just has a success and that success doesn't have to be like something major. It can be something that's important right. to somebody else. We're just too. I'll try to keep my successes quiet in two minute. <laughs> so he doesn't go off and have no, celebration. People are too embarrassed about like, you know, what somebody else is going to think. And, and there's nothing wrong with spider hugging. Spider hugging is a freaking natural. If you do it, you will know this is natural. Dwayne, when you list your 20th item, you do a freaking celebration. Yeah. Dance. Celebrate your stuff. <laughs> it's better to celebrate for other people, but you should do it for yourself as well. Sure. All right. So listen, I want to acknowledge in the chat, Silverhair Stacker Todd has given us $2. So thank you so much. Nice. Good job, nice. Todd. I bet Todd celebrates like nobody's business. Do you want to read what he said about it? He said, super chat less than Wade's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
that was the goal. He did it. Good it's job. All, Celebrate. It's, it's all relative, and the, the thought is what counts. And Tanya, you deserve it. It's awesome. Aw. Hey guys, don't I we all feel hear... like we haven't seen Tanya that much lately? I'm I so know. glad you're on here right it's now. Like today. I feel like a, I haven't seen you. It's like she has a family or something in the holidays. I around. know. <laughs> Right? They go hey. back to school on, on Tuesday, so hopefully I'll get back into my group. <laughs> can, I, can I butt in real quick? Because we were talking about, like, how we keep ourselves motivated or keep, like, keeping track and stuff like that. I want to hear how Lauren does it. Because I think Lauren is one of those weird people that just, like, they burn, like, with motivation already. So they don't have to do any of that stuff. So I want to hear mm -hmm. from her. Um. I guess what do you want to hear about specifically? I have systems for like every single thing. Uh, I, I want to so. hear some. I want to hear some of your systems. I don't know how many you have. I can talk all night. How do you track? <laughs> it, how do you track it all? Well, before I even touch anything, I will put it all into an Excel spreadsheet. So, like everything that I bought yesterday, I have it all piled up in the corner, and then probably tomorrow after work, I'll sit and go through it, and I'll enter it all into my inventory spreadsheet. And I do that first mm. and I usually put it aside and I list my old stuff first. I'm a person who likes death piles. People call them death piles, but I never know when I'm going to have time to source. So I have planned death piles <laughs> <laughs> and everything is going into my planned death pile after I do that. I'm working through my last planned death pile today. So. Wow. How do you, along those, like, I like Lana's question. I'm sorry. Did somebody say something? Mm -mm. No, go. No, I just said so, so organized. Just, yeah, piggybacking on Lonnie's question about the motivation thing. So when you, I know you get up like super early, and I think Brian Ilk oh, yeah. <laughs> does it too. But yeah, you get up super early and you're doing this before you actually go to your job, correct? Yep. So, there's got to be days where I'm sure there's days where you just say, forget this, but I, there's got to also be days where you say, I don't want to do it, but you do it. So what, you know, do you just turn on ACDC and say, I'm getting this done or what do you do? <laughs> A little bit like that. Usually in the morning I'll have stuff to ship and then I ship everything. And if I have a lot of things to ship, I won't have time to list, but normally I have like four or five things to ship. So it doesn't take too long. And then I'll list until I go to work. And I usually catch up on YouTube videos then. At so, work? No, before work. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, have, I do what Tanya does. I turn them on and I listen. I don't really watch. I just listen. And then I'll just I have look. an idea based off of what Lauren just said, how she's got planned death piles. What if, for those of us who want to do something like this, for a little reward, you know, like when you thrift and you find something that's like, oh, I can't wait to go home and I'm going to list that first thing, you know, because you always list the fun stuff first. Oh, yeah. Um, what if you list, okay, I'm going to list three things I don't want to list and then I can get to that thing. It's a reward, but you're still doing work. I was going to say, I never list the fun I thing like first. That. I never, <laughs> ever list the fun thing first. I do all I the shit it. and then I get to the gold prize at the end. Mm. Wow. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I do. Now. I don't. I want to list all my fun stuff that I got yesterday, but I'm probably not going to list it for a month, actually. That's smart. I've actually planned wow. the stuff I picked up, and I probably won't list it till close to tax return time because it's mm. higher price point stuff, and then people will buy it then. So Ooh, smart thinking. Mm. That's, yeah, really that's smart. called eating your vegetables first, Jory. <laughs> <laughs> I love vegetables too. <laughs> I go, I, go straight, I go straight for that dessert, though, because nine times out of ten. But that's the problem is because my death pile yeah, ends too. up being not the highest profit stuff. That's why it's there. So, I mean, that's so smart. The vegetables first is smart. Well, it's easy when you buy big yeah. job lots and stuff like that because you don't really know what you have. You just sort of mm. pick a box and you just start listing through it. So Yeah, and that's what I do yeah, too. I kind of have the organized death piles. I'll have the, I don't really know what this is. So I'm going to put it over here and research it later box. And then I have like just the boxes that I throw all the quick things in and yeah, everything goes in spreadsheets. You know, we used to do it with our pallets. Um, when we would go to our storage unit and we'd go, we're going to get a truck truckload and we'd rip into all of our pallets and get the good stuff, grab all the Dyson's and yeah. take those home, grab all the good high end cookwares, take those home, put, open a box. So that looks good. Take it home. But this last couple times, we've decided, like the last couple times we've gotten, actually all last year, 
we just decided we're starting the front pallet. Whatever's in there goes in the truck. Yeah. It made it so much more fun because you know you got good stuff coming up yeah. that you don't know what's in there. Um, and it doesn't and, feel overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. And when exactly. we go to the swap meet or something, we would have good stuff on there and junky stuff on there. You know, yeah. we'd have – so it kept our customers more interested too. So it helped. You're right, though, Jory. It did take the it, – it does feel less overwhelming because it's like I don't care what's behind these other pallets. This first one – we're taking yep. it and it is what it is mm. when we were just so trying to just well because you know then you carry then you, yeah then you just got yeah. all the smalls left you look at the smalls you see piles you're overwhelmed you don't see the value in them because you just made 300 bucks off the big sales so you know like do i really want you to make 25 dollars off this thing yeah. <laughs> even though there's like two grand and 25 dollar items there but it's just yeah. Brian, the Oak Brook Picker says, Jory, do you hide a bottle of booze under your death pile as a reward? <laughs> no, it's, that's, oh. the booze he's is just always on me. Huh? <laughs> oh, he's got it on his flask. His yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just there. It's ready to go. Something it's how it made it through the piles. <laughs> what? Yeah, so tying into that, something else that I do when I pack all of my big hauls, I usually try to do like a huge thing like I did yesterday. I think I have 15 bags of stuff that I got yesterday, but I sort through all of it. I put it into my inventory and then I actually group it. Like I put everything into, I don't know if you can see behind me right over here. Yeah. I put everything into bins of like items. So like I yank all the jeans out, all the purses out and I put them into separate bins that I just save as my death piles until I'm going to list. And then I'll go list all of those like items at once and you can list way faster. Yeah. And then you find your gold while you're in there listing. So to me, it's just way more fun to do it that That's way. Cool. But do you have different spreadsheets for lots? <laughs> or do, you have, do you have different spreadsheets for lots, lots of stuff or like one master one? Cause I have like a jeans spreadsheet and then a shirt spreadsheet and then like a uh, multimedia and then computer parts. And then I have like toys. Uh, die cast See? like i this is why i like you They're all the <laughs> well then when you list if i got like 25 die cast cars i'm just like item like item like item like item and i copy paste from the yes. spreadsheets right. yeah but joy yes. you do it different exactly what you, I do. you do your description like the actual description you're gonna in the use spreadsheet. on yeah. ebay in the spreadsheet yeah. Yeah, which I've never heard anybody else that does that. Because the description's smart. there. I pull the item out of the box. I look. I'm like, okay, it's a 1974 Tyco remote control, and I 1974 Tyco remote control. And then condition, you know, I'm like, looks like new, has broken exhaust pipe, has one headlight out, blah blah blah, and it's done. And then when I go to list my 30, 40 items on eBay, I'll literally just copy paste the title, copy paste the description, load the photos, done, move on to the next one, copy paste, copy paste, done, copy paste. And I have the prices already figured out in my spreadsheet too, like what I want to list it for and what I paid for it. Dwayne, that's what I was talking to you about. I think the last show. Yeah. I think we were talk having that conversation. I don't remember what it was. But yeah, yeah, you were saying the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great idea. Well, you guys are so organized. <laughs> it's just speed, a lot more organized right? than me. Yeah. I do just the opposite. With my death piles, I pull out the most expensive things first. <laughs> yep. And that's what I'm going to be listing first. Um, so Libby, uh, yeah. Libby asks, <coughs> why do you uh, guys separate everything on the spreadsheets? Accounting and taxes. I can see my cost per item and my sell price per item. So off there, and then I have my fees too. I got my uh, PayPal fee, eBay fee. So it's just, it's easy. End of each month, each spreadsheet, I look, I go, okay, I spent this much, sold this much. So it's, it's just simple yep. to add input for taxes. That's exactly why I do it too. And I also do it because I'm barely ever home. I'm home at really weird times and I'm getting offers all day long. And I want to know exactly what I paid for the item, exactly what I'm going to get out of it for the offer that I'm going to take. So I like to be able to access that yeah. on my phone Dogs and know exactly where something is when I look it up. So uh, a, a, good tip, a good tip for people that are not as organized as they are and you're kind of a little unorganized like me is I use Easy Auction Tracker. Um, it's a spreadsheet and it automatically imports all of my information from eBay. Um, you know, little, uh, what's the word called? Sales or whatever, where I could go in and I could enter how much I paid for it. And then how much it sold for, it automatically pulls all that information. Wait, cool. is that, would you say that was, Tanya? Auction Tracker? Is I think it's easyauctiontracker.com. Yeah. 
Okay, Biohazard Picker in the chat. Adam is saying I use Easy Au Easy Auction Tracker, which I think is the same thing you're talking about. Yeah. Huh. Yep. So, like, the first time you pay for it, I think it's um, $50. But then, uh, that $50 a year. And then when you renew your second year, you'll get a discount. And you'll end up paying, I think, $40 is what I paid this year. So, it's a great tool to have, especially if you get behind on things. It will automatically import up to three months back. Say you forget to do it for a couple months. So it'll mm. pull everything into the spreadsheet. It's amazing. Mm. Have awesome. you ever done a video on that, Tanya? I mean, I just, I mean, I don't utilize a lot of the information, but if I need to go back and look for some reason, it's something I have it right there and it's real handy. Cool. I guess it's kind of personal too. It'd be kind of, I mean, if you show your easy auction tracker thing, yeah. it would be like, here it is, right? It'd be like totally opening everything up. Is it but, a, yeah. an eBay only thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I would probably use it more if it would work on my MacBook, but it won't. So I have to use my desktop for that, um, my Windows you, desktop. You can emulate Windows on because, your MacBook if you want. And then you can yeah, but I'm not that, that smart, way. Jory. <laughs> 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 emulate Windows. <laughs> Jory could do it for you. Figure it out. So what else? When you guys okay, do you have and the the people watching can also chime in here. If you use music to like motivate yourself, like if you're say you're just having to grind it out that day, what kind of music do you guys listen to? Do you have do you use a variety? Dude, Is it one group or? I love heavy this. Metal. If oh. you use music, the heavy metal. <laughs> yeah, and then the in the the people out there in the chat put yours in too. What you do? If you listen to oh, music, you know what we ought to do, guys. Death metal. What? <laughs> we ought to start a thread. A no, we need to start a thread in the reseller six pack Facebook group, and we'll just share like good songs and stuff to put like in a playlist. That's a great yeah. idea. That is. Cool. So what do you guys listen Better to? Better write it down, Lonnie. Oh, my playlist is huge. I listen to like <laughs> if you list if you did everything. Country music, rock, rap, hip hop, R and B. It doesn't like it doesn't matter. Techno music, ska, like wow. All of it. Yeah, I like, I like everything. If I like it, I'll listen way. to it. I don't care what it is. In high school though, I thought I was a little rapper and listen to rap music all the time. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> you, you look like a little Eminem <laughs> hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a little Eminem shit. But... <laughs> 90s alternative. So, Harris uh, Stacker listens to the, um, what was it? The Power, Power, Rangers. Power Rangers theme song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it is. That's funny. Yeah. I do uh, mostly. I do hair bands and uh, classic rock, uh, classic southern right. rock. You know, Led Zeppelin or not Led Zeppelin, but Leonard Skinner. I listen to Led Zeppelin too, but uh, Led Zeppelin. Eagles, that kind of stuff. Depends on what I'm. Uh, on what you're listing? Like, do you have like you know, different music? <laughs> <laughs> alert! Alert! No, no. I'm listening. I got no. my jeans playlist going today, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not by what I'm listing. It's more like what I how I'm feeling. If I needed to be, you know, if I need to be amped up, then it's a little faster beat. Right. If it's a, you know, if I'm kind of mellow, then I wanted, you know, Pink Floyd kind of stuff or something like yeah, that. So. I drank eight Red Bulls and some heavy metal. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's here's. Well, my... I've got... I'm sorry. Sometimes I have to do that in the morning to wake up. I'm not gonna lie. Music, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, y'all. I want to acknowledge Krillin eight seven six. He um, super chatted two dollars, and he said that he listens to Sisters of Mercy live at Royal Albert Hall, nineteen eighty five. Specific. I saw them in concert once. Dad. What are they saying, Dwayne? It, it's kind of a. I don't even know. I saw them back in like '89. They were an opening band for Metallica. So, um, oh wow, the kind of I don't know, like Jane's Addiction, kind of I guess. Oh. Jane's, Jane's Addiction. Good. Yeah, no, I like them too, but it was a little, I think, a little harsher than that, if I remember right. Aren't they British? No, uh, that I can't remember. I mean, we're talking like oh, 1990, right? so I'm gonna look it up. 1991. So Maggie Doodle says that she listens yeah. to YouTube's or podcasts. United Kingdom. 
Hmm. Mm. That's good, Maggie Doodle. Cam Riggs 100 says, what is the difference between, between podcast and YouTube video? And a podcast is basically just audio. So that, and hearing a couple of people on the panel here say that they listen and don't watch. That's the reason that I'm totally thinking that I want to make start making some videos into podcasts as long as it makes uh -huh. sense. Like as long as they're not like a whole video really <laughs> heavily uh, reliant on the video. You know, like would you do a podcast easily? <laughs> what? Our videos. Wait, wait. Yeah, this one here. Podcasts. Yeah, it's true. I know. I agree. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get right on that, Lonnie. Yeah. On, Lonnie. yeah. Okay. Step it up. <laughs> uh, you tell them, Lauren. <laughs> Would you do one about cats, Lonnie, and just show the different pictures of cats in your podcast? Pictures? <laughs> yeah, pictures of different kinds of cats. No, no, it's not <laughs> oh podcast or audio, Steve. You would have I'm to describe how they feel. They feel. <laughs> I know you are, Steve. <laughs> like listening I'm, to a different video. I'm going to do a podcast about hairless chimps. <laughs> Brian, 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 Brian the Oakbook Drinker says, Lonnie, you have a face for podcasts. <laughs> so, <laughs> good job. <laughs> I'm going to get another beer. <laughs> Those cat videos do really good. Like, I have seen thousands and thousands of people watching live stream cat videos with oh my goodness. cats. It's crazy. I would do that. Well, the puppy bowl, you know, Super Bowl, they have the puppy bowl, and then they do the, the cat one. Kitten. It's a huge hit. I love it. Why don't they do a hairless chimp one during a Super Nobody Bowl? Wants to look at that. Okay, you're you guys remember the hairless, mean looking chimp. Do you guys remember back? Google, never saw one before. Google chimp. hairless chimp. It'll change your life. I've seen hairless chimps. I'm doing it's crazy it right looking. now. Should I be scared? Brutal, right? <laughs> There's hairless People spider monkeys them. and stuff too. I know. They're weird looking. Oh my God! There's yeah. a picture. This you're probably looking at the picture of the one that actually tore that lady's face off. There's a. It's pretty prominent. Picture. You can hear the 911 call of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's brutal. It's graphic. Yeah, that's the so one please. that Steve asked me to put for the thumbnail for the last show, I believe. I'm trying to sound the alarm. Do not get a chimp as a pet. And if you see one, you see somebody that has a pet. Do not go near it. Like, keep your distance. They're freaking brutal. Dude, they look very human. I know. Look at their, they have triceps and deltoid. You know, it's like, yeah. they, they're they ripped. Like, they're strong fuckers. They work oh. out or something? Yeah. Yep. Swing from trees. <laughs> look out on ripping people's faces off. Oh, my they're goodness. Brutal. This is going wrong fast. <laughs> yeah, this is off track, Tony. You need to bring it back. Okay, no more talking. That's what I like about our show. It's okay. always fun. <laughs> There's no rules. What's that, Lauren? Oh, albino squirrels. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I know we talked about like our goals and stuff as far as eBay, and a couple of you touched on YouTube, but let's talk about YouTube and your goals for your channels. I think we should start with Lauren well, and her video. I'll go first. <laughs> go first, Lauren. Um, my goal is to make a video. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> I really thought I would do it today, but I just was Tomorrow. like in a rhythm of thing, and I didn't want to quit, so. I'm gonna try tomorrow. It just depends Priority. when I get home from work, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if you Do just shoot for one day this coming week, I mean, I think that would be good. Yes, yes, yes. Steve, you wanna go? Sure, but I think I like the suggestion. I can't see the name because I don't. Pittsburgh Picks. Who is it? PGH. PGH yeah, Picks. Right. I'm going to take their suggestion, and I think we should get a spider nope. as a pet. Nope. <laughs> Anyways, that was a joke on the spider hugs. Um, Gordy's the best you know pet what? ever. You have I know. little Jerry. He's adorable. I, I know. Spiders. We love little Jerry. Okay. For, for YouTube, we're going to, like at the actual video, this is aside from, you know, the thing we want to do where we just want to have information, have other people help with putting information in one spot. Lonnie used the word curate, and that's the way it should be explained. But that's a different thing. But for the actual video, as long as we're, you know, as long as it remains a playground and we're having fun, 
we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and we're going to we're trying to, we're trying to just show what we do so that people can see that you know like we're we're not real talented we haven't done the year or step, anything so we don't even have enough history to know what to even expect or what to like well have step a goal. is very bright step is very bright i'm not and yeah. but we do want you know we we've gotten a lot of feedback from people and 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 we want to show them we want to help as many people as we can if you want to do what we do we'll give you all the information you know and we'll show you what we do as long as it's fun and it's it, i mean it really is a lot of fun and we mean, also want to experiment for your behalf on things so i'm it'll not be fun. shaving stuff no you don't want to shave that eyebrow no hmm. <laughs> but we're, just well, gonna, we're just playing i mean seriously it's fun and as long as it's fun this is what you know. We'll keep doing it, and I mean, we really enjoy it. The and if people it revolves, are funny, and and it just if it revolves around reselling, then we're going to bring a camera and we'll record it. So yeah, we want to, you guys to join in. So playground. We don't know, not major goals yet, but we're just going to go with the flow. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound very. <laughs> I mean, we're too new to have any. YouTube. Yet. Yeah, we don't even, I mean, I don't even know how to make a goal. Well, Y'all are so y'all have been so successful so far that uh, doing what you're doing sounds like a smart plan to me. Well, when you say like when yeah. you say successful, like okay, there. I want to try to. I'll do my best to clarify something, guys. Bear with me because I don't I don't explain things very well. And this is empty. So okay, I don't <laughs> look at. <laughs> yeah, avoid hairless chimp. I don't look at YouTube as a success or fail. I don't look at YouTube as, you know, like a, it's not a job. It's not a, it's a lot of fun. It's way different than we ever could have imagined it being, you know, like it, it's just, I mean, it's taken on a life of its own. And, and I mean that from the. Well, well, the Steve, Steve, well, Steve, can I interrupt you real quick? There yeah. is a success or fail on YouTube. It's called if nobody's watching your ass, you fail. <laughs> okay. Well, if here's people how. are watching you, it's success, and y'all are a, a success. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate what you're saying, Lonnie. And and day one, we said if one person watches, then we're gonna freaking blow their minds because we're gonna say whatever we want. <laughs> we're gonna do whatever we want. We said this. We said if we got one person and they're willing to to just you know hang out with us, then we're going to have fun and we're, cause we, there's things that we do and we don't show you guys and we have fun. We enjoy our life and we're weird and we don't care and we laugh a lot and we want to, we want to share that. And if it's one person, 20 people that really doesn't, that's irrelevant because we're enjoying it. We enjoy people make us laugh. I woke up this morning and I start reading like there was a message. And it, I started laughing, like literally LOLing out loud. LOLing <laughs> out loud. And then I said, I go, Steph, check this out. And I told somebody had said, you know, they made a comment about the most, I'm the, the most interesting man in the world. There was a guy on our yeah. video that looked like the most interesting man in the world. And I was like, this is freaking hilarious. And I started laughing. I told Steph, and I actually, in the short version of the video, the YouTube version, I put that in there. And he is the most interesting. He looks like the most interesting man in the world. But things like that. And there's other kinds. I think you know, it was Adam, and he said, who knew the most interesting man in the world rode a bike? Yeah. <laughs> and I know you guys yourself. experience this, too. If you do YouTube, I know you have people that they either write stuff that, you know, message you or whatever that you're like, that's freaking awesome. Or they make you laugh. Or they tell you, hey, this, this really helped. And you didn't even know yeah. that mm -hmm. what that one thing was. You had no idea that that was such a big deal to somebody. And that stuff, you know, that's, or that's they freaking tell awesome, you, man. And this is a good thing to keep an eye out for. Or this or this, like Deb yeah. and Shana Lee. She sends me emails and stuff. She'd be like, hey, look, look out for these. These are really good. You know, it gives but us guess, great ideas for stuff. Yeah, and I guess so, you're right, Lonnie. So a success to, to us would be when somebody says, hey, that made that made me feel good. You know, yeah. and I'm being I, honest, guys. That, I, I, messaged that you the other day. I messaged you the other day. I got like a really nice compliment, yes. a really nice comment on a video. One of your one of your viewers, actually, I think they came from you guys. 
yep. said, man, the way you, the thing that you said to try to do or the thing you did, it changed everything for me. It was so awesome. You know, and it, it man, that felt good. So yeah. that's I a think success. that was Sam Dallas. That's right. I agree but, with you there, Lonnie. That's a success. Even if that's a success when you, when you touch somebody else and help them out, yeah. then that's just, that's, Sam Dallas. Yeah, I agree. And that feels good. So maybe that's selfish. Maybe that's selfish. It freaking feels good to, to laugh. It feels good to wake Dude, up in the morning. I tried to touch somebody else. I got say, arrested. Tammy Talk said, does anybody else talk to Steven and Steph while wa they're watching their videos? <laughs> that's hilarious. I'm glad you do. Yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. Hard. So what are the what are some of y'all's other y'all? What are some of you guys other? Golly, I'm. You can say y'all. <laughs> okay, here's a goal. What are some of y'all's other y'all? Some of the other people on the panel's YouTube goals. Yeah. Is it my question. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, like Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to continue my auction. Continue changing it up a little bit to make it more interesting and keeping people in, uh, you know, in with other people. Um, I do want to uh, some sales uh, videos, which I haven't. I've actually okay. It's going to sound silly, but I've really never done a video before. Everything I've mm. ever done has been live. Every single thing I've done wow. is live. So never done a video. Uh, wow. I need to do that. So yeah, it. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing some, you know, some sales videos and stuff like that. Um, I've talked to uh, talked to Lonnie about helping me out with that because he. Uh, that uh, that he does that I want to incorporate if if he's willing to uh, absolutely yeah, give up the, uh, the idea. <laughs> so, um, wow, Dwayne, that blows my mind. You've never but, uh, done, you've never done a, a video video. Yeah. Oh my, goodness. never done a video. So, awesome. yeah, I, everything I've done is live. So everything kind of off the cuff there. Even when I started with uh, you know with uh, walking picker and and doing that, that was all live. So, wow. That's why you're so smooth. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I try. That's that's the plan. So. Very cool. So we, we got another super chat from Curlin. <laughs> he says, Steve and Steph, your UK followers are so fascinated with Southern California. Is that what he means? Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. They you know what? The, the like we always, and... we love all the british shows we love them we love all the foreign shows and we always are watching them and we love everything uk and stuff and so um when we were on nick's we channel do. we've been in their chat and stuff before and it's like everybody ignores us because they don't know who we are or anything so um then we went on his channel and all of a sudden we've got, been getting a bunch of uk subs and they're so funny and so fun we love them and so um we're they just having a blast see the yard sale and the swap meet and like especially the yard sale, Steph's bragging about wearing flip flops. Because it's so warm here. People are coming up in shorts, and <laughs> so that was a big thing. Yeah. That everybody over so there has been commenting about. For as about. much as they're like fascinated with Southern California, we're like way more fascinated with. We have watched over Luther. There, right? We love it. Yes, I was just about to say I love it when you speak in your British accent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they love it, but. <laughs> I've gotten some compliments. Oh. Good job. <laughs> so, yes, I'm trying to do it, but I keep. Yeah, I keep getting my British and Australian accents. They kind of mesh together. So no, Steve wrong. does yeah. too, I promise you. As long as you don't, as long as you don't confuse <laughs> the Australians and the New Zealanders, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but how do you live in New Zealand? Tanya, let's hear your buddy that lived here. What do we listen to? Oh, a British accent. I want to hear Tanya's British accent. Or your British accent. Oh, you're Australian. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm more Australian. <laughs> do it, do it. Do it, do it. Okay, tell me what to say. I don't know what to say. You could say, hey, Lonnie, a fancy knife. an alligator. <laughs> read out, uh, Lauren. Oh, or Lonnie, read... I, I, I can't do the show tonight. I'm knackered. Say that. <laughs> I'm, I'm knackered. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. I can't can do the show tonight. Yeah. I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> you. you got another Thank super you, chat. Thank you, Carol. Aww. So Carol's Thank awesome. You. Can we talk about Carol for a second? At the auction last night. Yes, yeah, she did such a great Man. job. She did. She's like camera really shy. Impressed. She doesn't like to have her channel, you know, people watching or anything. But 
But you couldn't tell one bit. No, she rocked it. And she just kept adding more and more stuff, pulling stuff out. And man, it was so fun to watch. It was mm -hmm. really cool. Did you know well, not that? Only, yeah, not only that, that, but oh, well, I was going to say, not only that, but she, she set the record. I mean, that was the, oh, the highest. Yeah. So cool. So. That was crazy. Yeah, she set another record. Oh, like NASA has, they've asked her on certain times during the year. She has to stay indoors because her heart is so big and bright. <laughs> no, it really, it really messes with science. Oh. So that's the only negative about her big heart. Is that it messes with science. Mm. We love Carol. <laughs> She's sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Carol, you really do have a good uh, uh, a camera presence. I mean, you really do. I even if you don't yeah. think so, we do. So okay. and uh, we're, we're definitely. Let's see. Okay, what were some more then? We hogged it up. Oh, sorry. I'm going to shut up. No, we want to hear, did everybody talk about their YouTube goals? I don't think so. No, uh, Tanya didn't. Yeah, so no. you were talking about, yeah, YouTube. Tanya didn't and uh, Jory, I don't think, did. Go ahead, Jory. I touched on it. I wanted to make more. I still want yeah. to get that self tracking drone, but it's pretty expensive. So it can fly above oh, yeah. the drone. Yeah. That would be cool. And then more, yeah. more live shows, because I'd. They really do any live shows, pretty much just this. <laughs> this is my live show. Yeah. Well, for me, I definitely want to keep up with um, our antique booth talk show. That is so much fun. It might even be my favorite. I just love talking with um, Tam and Jen about our booths. And I mean, I get so many good ideas from them, and it's, I just love it. Um, and also the jewelry detective show, that's always a lot of fun. Um, and I'd really like, and I say this all the time, but I'd really like to implement it this year, is to do my sales update videos uh, more more recent. Like I, I, right now, I'm two months out. So in a perfect world, I'd like to do a sales update video every week, like you guys do. Like Lonnie does that. Um, you, you know why I do it, Tanya? Because what? because that's what people want to see the most from it's me. So I found weird. that like. I they can make videos here. about anything else in the world. They all they really want to know is what mm -hmm. did I sell, and I right. I feel a little used to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's like we don't really give it. We don't really care about you. What's <laughs> on today, right? But right. that's a great it, point. It's this true. is my little TV. No one cares what you sell it for. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I actually got a comment today that's like, I like your new format where you don't do so much talking. <laughs> you know, oh my like, goodness. <laughs> I, 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 I guess for him, him. Just stare at the camera 10 minutes. Don't say anything. <laughs> Do a private one for him. Yeah. Give him a private. Deeply stare into each other's eyes for a while. <laughs> well, I also have to give props to Lonnie for teaching me the trick um, about using, is it shift command, Lonnie, that opens another tab? You made my life. Uh, no, it's control click. And then whenever you want to shift, like switch between, then you go control tab. Or if you want to go back to the previous tab, control shift tab. Oh my! It made my life so much easier and it saved me a ton of time. Good. So, awesome. Thank you I so think much. I, told you, I think I told you about that. Like, I think it was like maybe when I first met you, like you're watching one of my live streams and you asked me about it or something. I said, oh yeah, Tony, you just do blah, blah, blah. I think that might've been the first time I ever talked yeah, to you. Yeah, I was mind blown. <laughs> Good. Let's all give give Lonnie say last night. Do you do any auction? Seriously, you were fantastic, Lonnie. And then, like yeah, you yeah. and Chad together did an excellent. You guys had a great report. But Lonnie was like, I'm like, what the heck? Where did this come from? Like you were know. so you freaking talent. good at it. Seriously, somebody else give him some love too. I was worried. I, you're going to put me out of business, man. I mean, <laughs> damn. Well, well, I've done it twice, and I pulled some. I, I really appreciate it, guys. I, I appreciate the uh, the nice nice words there. But I pulled a lot from Dwayne, and then I pulled a ton from Chad because Chad is like the consummate auctioneer. <laughs> Chad is like so slick and so good, and he's got this great radio voice. So uh, I'm trying to learn, trying to trying to catch on. You know, I appreciate it. The one thing that you did last night that I'm going to have to incorporate is the idea that from $360 to $370 per item, per item price is really only a few cents. 
That's <laughs> mad, <laughs> brother. That's mad. That's a good one. <laughs> and it was true. It, it was true. true. It's true. And you just had, when you point it out like that, it makes it so much easier to just give another 10 bucks, right? <laughs> that's right. Right on. That's the, that's the key. Get more money, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know what I think it is too, is I like, I like kind of being an auctioneer because I'm asking for money, but I don't feel the guilt. Because I'm not getting the money. You know what I mean? Because I'm not getting the money. So I can I can use every tactic I can think of to try and get more money and have a clear conscience because it's not going to me. No, yeah, you, screwed, you screwed me out of a few items doing that, Lonnie. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was a blast though. We had so much fun. And actually, me and Heather woke up this morning and we both rolled over and she's like, Do you feel guilty? And I'm like, no. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> but it's just you know because we were not expecting that, so we're like, "Wow, that." Yeah. <laughs> but no, we had a great time, and I really am. Uh, you guys, seriously, that's that surprised. Uh, we were both in tears. Um, it was it was amazing. So I, I wanted to say thanks again, you know, publicly. Yeah, and I noticed night. that um, it was a pleasure for everybody. Monica has said, "Yes, Monica had said something. Um, somebody had mentioned doing that. You know, I think that'd be a great idea to give back to you guys for all that you do." Wow. <laughs> okay, so we are approaching that time, eight thirty. So, did we decide whose channel the show will be on next week? We have a scheduler. We, we have a uh, scheduler. Yes. <laughs> I'm the scheduler. <laughs> I'm going to lower the boom on y'all. Jory. Jory gets it next. Yay. You cannot. I'll rub my down. Or I'll, I'll rub myself down on maple syrup. Right. And I just know that <laughs> <laughs> this will be PG 13 or whatever the word is. Uh, no. It, my it's channel? No. I'm, if you have young ones under 16, yeah. maybe don't bring them to the show. Oh my goodness gracious. If they don't know what a toonie bar is, they're not allowed to come to the show. <laughs> the toonie. <laughs> yeah, Canada. Uh, yeah, that, on no it's all on, So Jory gets it next week, and then I'll go through and uh, actually look back and kind of figure out who left that. Awesome. Thank so. you. We appreciate that, Dwayne. No Can we talk about how nice the weather is out here in California? No, hey, somebody Shut mute up. him. Yeah, somebody <laughs> mute him really quick. Yeah. He's trying to I'll lose subs. <laughs> oh the snow pile at the end of my driveway from shoveling and rolling so much, you can't see over top of it anymore. Oh, my goodness. And my snowblower broke yesterday. Or no, this morning. So uh, not a snowblower. We're supposed to get another like, 12 to 14 inches of snow. Day, hey, you can still get sunburnt in the winter. That's true. Let that fool you. You can't. Well, I knew that. Actually, worse than all about that. Well, you get burnt under UV light, probably just from above you. But. Burnt under fluorescent light. <laughs> <Or> fluorescent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's cold and snowy here. Hmm. Not like Cali. Yeah, our weather's been crazy too. But I guess we are going to wrap this up. I want to say thank you to everyone in the chat for joining us. Ta-da, yeah. And I want to say thank you for all the super chats, um, especially to Wade of Wade's venture Ventures. I hope that you guys will go check out his YouTube channel. And he has also Wade's um, Ventures on Instagram as well. We will see you guys on Jory's channel next Sunday. Good night, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye. See you.